guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu, and I'm doing this in association with the Budo Brothers. Uh, this is Budo Brothers here. And so go check out their stuff at uh, budobrothers.com and looking for them on all the socials and everything. We have some cool content coming out with them. Now, um, I did a, a couple of series now where we did like a first five that you need to know of this or that or whatever. And so I think uh, an important one is the first five escapes in general that you need to know. And when I was going through these and trying to put them in my mind, these are the ones I came up with. So again, there's other very important escapes that you need to know out there. But if I was going to pick the first five that anybody would need to know, I would prioritize them this way. So let's start from mount position. These, I think, are the two most important ones that you need to know to begin with. And the first most important one is the bridging escape or what we call upa escape or trap and roll. Now, the way that I like to do that one is I'll, I want to start here. And rather than reaching up and grabbing on his arm and trying to isolate his arm, I want to push my head to the outside of his arms this way here. So I'm trying to push him off of me essentially, but I know he's gonna probably either turn to square back up with me or pull away. If he turns to square back up with me, this arm has to get light and I'm gonna trap it here against his body. I'm gonna rotate my hand so I have one on his wrist and I have one on his elbow here like this. I'm gonna trap the leg on the same side over here. I use my elbow to keep his knee in place if I possibly can while I trap his leg here. And then I'm gonna turn, look the direction that I'm gonna go, slide this foot up here to push his hips forward more and get my foot between his feet. I'm gonna look that direction, bridge, and pull my head away from that direction here, and then come up, and now I'm ready to posture up inside the guard, or come back and block for punches if this is a striking situation. It's very important to have a complementary energy for whenever I have a different reaction. So if um, he's high and tight in the mount like he was prior to that, that, that bridging the upa escape works well. But if he's low and wide, as people tend to be sometimes, then this one works a little better. So I'm gonna turn on my side, and this is gonna be elbow escape. So his knees are a little wider, his base is a little wider here, Maybe he's, he's up at an angle a little bit more like this, harder for me to get his arms. And I'm gonna turn on my side this way here, and I wanna brace my forearm across his hip points. I have, one, I have my elbow on one hip, I have my wrist going towards the other hip. This elbow is sucked in, and this knee, this leg is straight here. There's gonna be two insertion points. My elbow is gonna go inside his thigh, my knee is gonna go down here by his ankle, and I'm gonna scrape inside like that here, get my foot uh, free here, trap his leg so that he doesn't try to pass right away. I'm gonna come here, frame against his neck and his arm to begin with until I get facing this direction. And then I'm gonna use my hand on this side to clear just my knee. Once my knee is clear here, I'm gonna switch one more time and I may either hug or I may frame depending on what his energy dictates. I'm gonna lift this leg, hip out to this side, retract my foot and then come back here and try to reestablish my guard right away as soon as I get him in the guard and break his posture down. A place that you're likely to find yourself early on is uh, bottom side control, and that can be one of the most miserable places to find yourself. So um, and learning how to escape and having one kind of basic fundamental escape to begin with is very important. And there's a lot of other ones, there's a lot that work really well with complementary energies, but this is the first one I feel like you need to learn from side control, and it's to replace the guard. So if Dustin has me on some kind of side control, I would like to prevent this arm here from going under my head. But if you're starting out, you're probably likely to find yourself in the worst case scenario, which is him getting under your head like this. And this can be pretty miserable. So what I need to do is make space where I possibly can. I'm gonna get my wrist bone here into his hip on this side, and I wanna get this wrist bone under his neck. And there's a couple different ways to do that. The way I like if there's not good space here already is use my bicep against his head this way here and make that space and then put my wrist inside here. So I got wrist bone in the hip, wrist bone in the neck. And then, so then from here now, I'm gonna bridge because I have to scoop my butt away from him. And if his elbow is stapled on the floor over here, it's gonna be difficult. So I'm gonna bridge to make that elbow light here this way. I'm gonna hip out this direction. And I've made a lot of space between my hips and his hips, hopefully. Whenever I go to do that, I now can insert my knee this way. Whenever I make space, I need to fill space and preferably with a hinge joint and this knee is a hinge joint. So now I bite the back, I put the knee inside. Now I'm gonna bring this hand that was on the hip up here, hold his arm, push uh, open like this, my knee and my shoulder go away, stretching him out on the side. My foot goes to the floor and I hip clear and hopefully either I can at least reestablish the guard or if I'm lucky, maybe I can keep this arm with me and get like a makeshift arm lock out of it on this side. But I don't wanna to get too greedy. As long as I upgrade in my position, I'm doing pretty good. Arguably the worst place you can find yourself on, um, even though bottom mount is pretty miserable, bottom side control is pretty awful, but one of the most dangerous places you can find yourself is if the guy gets on your back. So having a, a decent back mount escape in the beginning is very important to know. So if Dustin has gotten my back some kind of way here, it may be that he's gotten here and he's established this seatbelt kind of position, which is really bad. He's got both his hooks. He's got his seatbelt established this way. And so I'm very late in the game to learning how to escape. 
Um, if I have to choose which one I'm gonna escape to, I'm gonna try to go to the overhook side like this. I wanna hold down on his wrist here like this. I wanna keep my shoulder shrugged up so it's kinda of kicking his shoulder at an awkward angle. I want this hand here to go here and grab his elbow. So now it's gonna be very difficult for him to choke me with this top arm uh, like rear naked choke style. I wanna act like I'm throwing him forward but probably my shoulder will hit up here and I wanna get my base nice and wide, right? My intention here, the goal in mind is I wanna be uh, turning to face him the whole time. So I get here like this, I'm holding this arm down and he can't choke me with his bottom arm so he'll probably readjust his grip. When I feel him readjust his grip and his hands come disconnected, then I'm gonna slide down and get this grip here on his wrist. And once that happens, I'm gonna push this open and get my hand inside to wedge and I'm gonna use that as I crawl up my head here, get my head and shoulder to the floor and continue to turn out this way, pulling and stretching this arm against me here so that it makes it difficult for him to turn, get back on top of me or to uh, almost impossible for him to choke me or do anything with this arm. Once I have this pretty clear and both my shoulders are on the mat, I'm gonna switch my hands down here, push the leg away, hip out, and then get this one inside. So if he wants to try to hop back up and get the mouth right away, I'm gonna catch here and I have my hooks inside and I can maybe work back to a guard position or even sweep him if I'm lucky. Now, I know we're talking about um, escapes, but an escape is uh, in this, uh, in the way that I'm using the term escape, is just me going from a bad position to a better one. So one that I'm including that I feel like you need to know right off the, the bat or early on is uh, how, to, how to pass the guard or how to escape the guard. So if I find myself in Dustin's guard here, um, it's not good for me if he's got my posture broken down, so I'm gonna block and monitor here on his arms. Here, I'm setting my, my butt kind of back and down. I have my posture low to begin with. I wanna take my hands inside. If he has the gi, I can grab the material and punch it, or I can just C-clamp my hands like this into his armpits. I wanna put both my knees first uh, behind his butt this way and keep my head down. I'm gonna stick my butt up in the air this direction. Once here, now whenever I feel like I can, I wanna bring my knee up and sit in like this so that my knee comes up between his legs. When that knee comes up between the legs, now I have his legs split and I can decide then which way I'm gonna to need to pass. Sometimes when I get here, he may dish his hips this way, he may dish his hips that way. Most common response is he dishes his hips over here this way because this is moving more toward my back and maybe destabilizing me. So now I want this uh, knee to go to the floor. I'm keeping this wedged in by his hips so that he doesn't re-pummel the leg inside. And then I'm gonna go here, push this down, step out, and then essentially now I'm passing and I'm getting myself to side control. So um, again, that one here, I'm C-clamping in on my arms. I'm going here, putting my knees together, getting up this direction, bringing my knee up toward my chest, sitting down until that knee pokes through between his legs and separates the legs. Once his legs are open and his knee is up, now I can start to slice through with this leg here, establishing my underhook, passing the legs, and getting to a top dominant position. So again, guys, uh, these I think are more important than a lot of other escapes that we'll have to learn later on for more technical positions, but these are gonna get you the most versatility over time. And with the right timing, you're gonna pull these off against even more experienced practitioners and everything else. These are definitely gonna save you some, from somebody establishing a really miserable position on top of you and attacking you with complete impunity. So uh, anyway, check these out. Let me know what you think about them and let me know some of the other escapes that maybe I should have included in this list other than just these five. And keep watching Night Jiu Jitsu channel and check out Budo Brothers guys are doing a lot of good stuff over there and I've got some cool content coming out with them in the very near future. Thanks a lot.